Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Payson. Welcome back to all the subscribers to the show. And if you're new to the show, please subscribe so that you can get more great interviews like this one coming at you right now. The reigning art of war bantamweight champ uh, is on the show today to talk about another title he's going to be fighting for. Anthony Hound Dog, welcome back. Welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, I appreciate, um, you know, the time you set aside for me and I like coming on. So, um, yeah, I like I like being here. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you. It's been fun having you on the show. Now you're the champ for Art of War. We were able to talk to you uh, before about that. You won by first round guillotine. Very impressive uh, against the hometown guy in Eastern Pennsylvania. Now you're headed to Ohio. You're jumping up in weight to featherweight. Your last fight was at bantamweight, jumping up to featherweight to take on a tough opponent for made men productions. Um, and that's going to be made men promotions. And that's going to be December 2nd. Take it away. As far as how do you see this fight going? What made you say yes to this fight? How are you feeling? And what's it going to be like to potentially win champ champ status? Yeah, so the way it came about was um, I was potentially going to fight for the new line 135-pound title, but, like, scheduling issues, and I wasn't able to get uh, my corners to Kentucky because it was going to be December 9th in Kentucky. Um, we had to scrap those plans, and um, I was on, I was hitting up, like, promotions everywhere trying to get uh, one last amateur fight in. And then one night I showed up to the gym this week and Mike was like, hey, uh, Maidman offered you a title fight at 145 for December 2nd. Uh, I think we should take that. And I trust them. I trust him. And so I, I'm like, all right, you know, give me the night to think about it. And uh, went home, thought about it, watched him. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. So, um, you know, it's like it's a tall task to do it on short notice, go up a weight class. Um, you know, so the odds are kind of stacked against me in that, in that sense. And, uh, you know, it's something that I'm going to have to deal with as a professional anyway. So I don't want the first time that, you know, I'm fighting a bigger, taller guy to be when I'm a professional. And, uh, so it's a good test for me. Like I, I every time I've been on here, I say, I want to test myself. And, and, uh, I think that's a good test for me. Um, and, you know, probably regardless of this outcome, this will be my last amateur fight. So I'm excited. I'm excited that it can be, uh, for a title at another weight class and uh, just, you know, another big test that I'm looking to pass. So, Yeah, you put a lot of information in that response. That's one of the reasons why I love having you back on the show. So a couple things to follow up with. First, it's always great to have that mindset that every fight you're going to take is going to be a learning experience, something for you to overcome. Um, in this case, a guy who's bigger and taller um, like you said, when you're a pro, you're going to end up taking fights against all types of fighters. And so you want that experience. That was big news, though, that you just dropped that you're you're looking to turn pro. You train out of Stout Pittsburgh as your primary gym. You mentioned Mike Wilkins, Coach Mike Wilkins. Uh, what's it like having them? I know we've talked every time you're on the show. We've talked about Lucas Siebert, who has, who's had an incredible just year and two months in the sport. And everybody coming out of Stout is just on uh, really a great, great path forward. Uh, Luke Martin is about ready to make his uh, debut. A former Division II national wrestling champ is going to be making his debut right before Thanksgiving. Very exciting stuff. So what's it like having that that training camp and being ready so you don't have to get ready? Kind of that, that training mindset that Stout Pittsburgh uh, really has prepared for you. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's my gym right now. That's my only gym. Uh, I've moved. Up, I, I've been up here for, you know, almost two years and I was splitting time between Stout and Bauerhaus. Um, but, you know, some kind of personal stuff that went down. Uh, I'm just I, I'm just out of Stout. So Mike's my coach and uh, Will's my coach. And I even look at Lucas as a coach, uh, too. And uh, so, yeah, I that's my gym. Those are my guys. And uh, like, I think the last time I talked to you was after I won the Art of War title. And I was like, you know, I want to take a little bit of time off, 
Um, I didn't do any of that. I actually went right back to the gym like on Tuesday and didn't take any time off. Um, so I've been like training hard. I don't know. I, I, I didn't, I didn't take any time off. So I've been training hard for months and it is that, you know, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. So, uh, when it was offered, I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm in shape. I'm good to go. Like my weight's like on point. Um, and that's how you gotta be. If you like take the sport seriously, which I do. And, um, you know, those guys that you all mentioned, Luke Martin, Tim Bailey, Lucas, uh, Miguel, um, Brittany, uh, you know, uh, Tim Moriarty's got to fight, uh, you know, Jow, like all those guys, like those guys are the, are the ones that, you know, are, are helping me stay ready. So I don't have to get ready. Like the, every day at practice, they're hard practices and I'm getting better every day, even if it's a little bit, like, even if it's, even if it's like not even really that tangible, of like, uh, get betterness, like I'm getting a little bit better every day and that's the goal. So, um, you know, shout out to the coaches, shout out to Mike. And shout out to my teammates because uh, I wouldn't be here without them. You know, and, and shout out to, you know, we 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 split our ways, but um, you know, shout out to shout out to all the guys I used to train with too, and you know, I still got friends there, but uh, you know, shout out to them because you know I take the experience with me. So, sure, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I think that's a very respectful way. Sometimes private, you know, personal things happen. I appreciate the, uh, you know, keeping things confidential. We've seen at the highest UFC level that sometimes when fighters move from a gym or, you know, associate with a different gym, however that ends up happening, sometimes it gets public and messy and it doesn't need to. You're doing what's best for you. And obviously Bauerhaus had a part in the beginning of your career and now you're at Stout, and that's that. That's a beautiful thing. That's um. You mentioned Brittany Bickart. I I've known Brittany Bickart from when she was living back in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and doing Muay Thai and kickboxing for USKA. Then she took a big move to Pittsburgh, and then I ended up moving to the Pittsburgh area. So it's been fun to catch back up with her. But sometimes things like that happen, right? You re relocate, you go different places. Lucas Siebert started, I think. Yeah, and I'll never. Yeah, I'll never, I'll never speak bad about them. You know, I respect all of them. I respect the gym. I respect, uh, you know, I still have very close friends there that I still talk to. Um, but, you know, and I'll never talk about it. But yeah, it's just yeah. yeah I think it that's is what the it best. Is, I know? think that's the best because you don't want to make, you don't want to make, uh, you don't want to make that the the focus. The focus is you building up your skills getting a big win to become double champ. And like you said, go pro next. That's that, that should be your focus. We've seen sometimes uh, because the sport is very uh, tight knit. We've seen sometimes fighters get distracted by some of the things that could sometimes uh, come along. Um, but absolutely, absolutely incredible stuff. Um, the whole gym's fantastic. I don't want you to give away game plan, but I do know that you mentioned the, the height and, you know, the size of your opponent without giving game plan, what's it like to have to prepare for a taller, bigger opponent? Is it more of a mental thing? Is it some technique things that you and Mike and coach will are working on? Um, is it, it's a sparring. Are you sparring differently to kind of get that feel without going specifics, just kind of what's it like preparing for a bigger, taller opponent? Uh, I mean, it's honestly not that different. Um, you know, he's got two arms and two legs, just like everybody else. And uh, it's just more of a, yeah, his face is, his face is right in the middle of his body. So, uh -oh. um, yeah, it's just, it's not too, too different. It's just like little minor adjustments on, on stuff. And uh, I think most of it is mental. Like, you know, it's like, oh, God, that guy's big. Like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, the last guy I fought was bigger than me. So I don't really, I don't think it matters. You know, it's not a. Size matters when there's no skill involved. So, uh, you know, when the skills are involved, um, you know, I think that's what it boils down to. So, sure. And we've already done a whole show on your win against Eric Belts, uh, who at the time it, it was you defeated him in the first uh, minute of the first round with a guillotine, but he was an undefeated amateur, you know, and and you were coming in. And, you know, you were the outside guy and you really took on a um, on a tough opponent. Sounds like the, the guy you're matched with this time is a tough opponent as well. And that's that's what makes your win over them 
more significant. So it's really great. The mindset we talked about the gym. Do, do you have people you want to thank? I don't know if you're at the point of, of figuring out sponsors. I know with a short notice fight, sometimes that, that that's hard to get together. Um, so obviously you might not have sponsors, but uh, who do you want to <laughs> thank and kind of who's uh, who's in your corner, maybe physically, I know your coaches, but who's kind of some of your bigger supporters? Um, so my sponsors are all the same still. I have like a very strong knit group of, of sponsors that I've always uh like the second that I know, I, I contact them. Um, so it's the hangar in Moon Township. It's like a it's like a bar and grill. Um, awesome food, awesome atmosphere. Um, the owner there, Alan, is like a super cool dude, loves sports. So he's like all about uh, me fighting. So he supports me to the end. Uh, and actually back home in, in Frederick, uh, El Forna Pizza, uh, John Perrin uh, there is like, all the same way so uh those two are some really big supporters uh two fight bros uh have, you know they've hooked me up with gear they've hooked me up with um you know like money like they're they're awesome too um and then uh back back at home from from my gym uh she's a real estate agent she works out of a uh, the uh the company's called the agency she supports me too um her name's jennifer she's like you know a sweetheart so she helps me too um, and then my gym stout. So, um, you know, I've, I've started working there, uh, kind of teaching some classes and stuff so I can like, you know, just be around the gym as much as I possibly can. Like, cause that's what, uh, you know, I want to do. Um, so yeah. So like all those, all those people in my corner, um, and then, uh, my corner will be Lucas and Mike again. That was part of the reason why I didn't take the, uh, the new line title fight. Uh, it was just because I was literally going to go out there alone and I couldn't do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, Lucas and Mike will be in the corner too. Uh, Coach Will will be there. Um, and then, you know, my family, friends, girlfriend, Becca, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not easy putting up with like that lifestyle. Like, I, I don't think really a lot of people really understand that, like how hard this is uh, just on your life. So, um, you know, people that stick around are, are some real ones and uh, I appreciate all of them. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. First, a shout out to your sponsors for being not only so supportive um, and it's always great to hear those sponsors that are local sponsorships, you know, people, you know, people you support people that you're comfortable uh, telling other people to go to and giving a recommendation, but also shout out to them being on board with the short notice. Like you said, hey, you get a fight, you text them sometimes. Uh, I've heard of sponsors that kind of, you know, they they need more notice and all that. So a special th shout out to them for being so quick to help you, even when it's, you know, short notice. That's going to go really well at the pro level when fights can come up, you know, at the pro level, some some crazy fights can happen because making, you know, keeping a card or keeping a fight on the card. But I didn't expect, so it's really cool, as a follow-up question, didn't know that you had picked up uh, some some coaching and teaching at the gym. Uh, what what type of classes, what age range are you teaching, and what has that experience been like for you? Um, so it's actually not my first experience coaching. Uh, so I took, like, my previous experience coaching and then uh, – took it to here where like uh, some positions opened and I was like, yeah, like I'll, I'll hop on that in a heartbeat. So now it's, uh, I'm teaching the kids. Jiu-Jitsu, so adult striking uh, from time to time. And I teach um, and like fill in for like adult jujitsu classes. Hmm. Um, so a lot of everything, but my, like my regularly scheduled ones are like a lot of kids jujitsu stuff. So I really enjoy that. It's, uh, it's funny, like watching little kids, like, try to just, it's honestly funny because they just like you show them a couple of things you're like all right like go live start scrapping and they do and it's just like funny to watch and uh and it's just like cool to watch them pick things up it's cool to watch anybody pick things up and like that you just taught them and then they're like doing it actively so that's i really like teaching and it like sharpens all of your own skills too because you're like really have to break down those techniques to like be able to explain it to somebody that doesn't know what you're trying to tell them uh so it's a big help uh, both financially and, and uh, you know, for my mental game and, and my just game as a whole, like, you know, I, I can't thank Stout enough for helping me and giving me that opportunity to uh, to coach and uh, teach some classes. 
Yeah, that that that's great, champ. I think for a lot of people that are athletes that make that transition, it it strengthens their athletic game, but coaching in and of itself is its own sport, right? You have to find your own way. You have to be able to like as a dumb example, I'll sometimes tell people like learning to tie your shoes. We've done it for so long. You're good at jiu-jitsu. You won your title with jiu-jitsu. And so if it's been a while and you know how to tie your shoes and now you're trying to teach a four-year-old or five-year-old to tie their shoe, you know, somebody who's learning, you suddenly have to like break it down and go, wait a second, how do I do this? Right. And so that can help when you're, when you're having to teach. And just like the example of tying your shoes, sometimes there's slightly different strategies. You know, I'm a around the tree under, you know, but some people are the double bunny ears. And so similar to in jujitsu, sometimes kids have to kind of learn slightly different ways to get to the same result. And so I think sometimes that can help uh, an athlete really see, uh, really sees maybe some different options or, or really strengthen their fundamentals. So it's awesome. Obviously that helps you out financially. And that's another thing, you know, we've talked about the sponsorships, uh, you know, you mentioned you mentioned coaching. You're training like a pro in the sense that you're in the gym. That's your entire focus. But it, it takes a while for fighting to actually be sustaining. So um, I, I give hats off to you and all the other. Pretty much everybody you mentioned from Stout is really committed to the fight game, but they have to do a lot of different things in order to be able to make that work until they get to a point where they where you know where they're fighting at a level where they they can afford it. So. It, it, you're really at a great spot to really develop all your skills. I can't say enough that I wish you the best skills and hats off to all of your, your coaches, your trainers, the guys, like you said, Lucas Siebert, coach Will and coach Mike that are making the trip with you that, that tight knit family goes a long way. Um, October, uh, December 2nd is going to be here before you know it. So for everyone out there, either make a trip out to Ohio to see, um, the hound dog become double champ status, or I'm sure there'll be a pay-per-view or a stream of some type for made men. December 2nd will be here super soon. I really appreciate you coming on. It's been an honor. Uh, my name is Luke Payson for MMA Fancast. A reminder to subscribe to the channel and hopefully soon you can be back on as the double champ. But for now, you're the reigning um, art of war bantamweight champion and you're about ready to fight for the made men uh, featherweight champion you are the hound dog anthony hogback thanks so much for coming on the show thank you very much luke i appreciate it you take care you too